coming off the successes of Sonic Colors and Sonic Generations, Sega took a little inspiration from Nintendo's Mario Galaxy titles with their latest outing, Sonic Lost World. Now don't get me wrong, this game isn't a ripoff by any means, but instead carves out an identity all its own. I'm really new to the Sonic scene with only playing the very first Sonic the Hedgehog and bits and pieces of other classic titles, so modern Sonic is something totally foreign to me, outside of Smash Bros, and I got my first taste of it here in Sonic Lost World on the Wii U, and I have to say that it's not half bad, albeit it does take some time to get used to. To no surprise, the vile Dr. Robotnik is up to no good in Sonic Lost World, with Sonic and Tails hot on his trail. A group of creatures known as the Deadly Six are by force being controlled by Eggman for his own nefarious plans via a particular device. Without thinking, Sonic comes in and destroys it, thus freeing the Deadly Six from Eggman's leash. With them being bent on destruction, Sonic, Tails, and Eggman must put their differences aside and come together to take down the Deadly Six before their world is no more. One of the things I like about Sonic Lost World is it's not short of ideas. Coupled in with some excellent level designs, it will constantly be throwing multiple different and clever gameplay elements at you. You'll be roaming around large 3D environments in 360 degrees like Mario Galaxy, platforming through traditional 2D side-scrolling sections, flying through the air, grinding on rails, turning into a snowball, and a mix of other elements to keep things fresh. This all sounds good and dandy on the surface, but to make it a really great game, you need to execute the controls correctly, and it takes a good amount of time until you finally get a handle on how the game plays. But once you get it down, the game becomes so much more enjoyable. New to the series though is that you can now toggle between three different speeds with Sonic that starts with a continuous light jog until you hold down ZR and take off at a sprint. And you can even give yourself another burst of speed by holding down ZL to perform Sonic's signature spin dash. So having different speeds to take advantage of at the press of a button gives you more control over Sonic and is actually quite helpful considering the game has a heavy focus on platforming and you'll be needing all the precise movements you can get. But Sonic can be difficult to control in specific levels, namely the ice levels where jumping while running is kind of just a mess. Or when things just get really slippery. Now Sonic's trademark homing ability does make a return so you can still chain up delicious combos, but I did get frustrated with it at points when it didn't lock on when I wanted it to. And on the other hand, he also comes packed with a few new moves up his sleeve. Sonic has taken some lessons in parkour and is now able to vault over ledges, run on walls, or even perform a jump kick to send enemies flying, potentially hitting other baddies in its path. The new wall run mechanic is actually really awesome when you successfully pull it off, but it can also be very annoying. I would find Sonic running up a wall multiple times when I didn't want him to, all because I had the run button held down. It's super fragile when it comes to this, causing some unnecessary deaths. So if you're used to platforming with Mario like myself, you're going to be having a tough time adjusting to these new mechanics that Sonic throws at you, from the different running speeds, jumping, wall running, and more. You just really have to hang in there until you finally start to nail down the controls, and that's when things start to get fun. For a long time fans, Sonic has always been about the speed, and you can certainly do that here, but Lost World encourages you to slow down and explore your surroundings Mario style to find all the hidden goodies, and I am totally fine with that. You'll find secret areas that hold a plethora of gold rings, capsules full of animals waiting to be freed, or one of the five tricky red rings sprawled throughout each level. The gold rings though didn't really feel like they had much use in this game, as collecting 100 of them no longer rewards you with an extra life, which is a total bummer considering I ran out of lives and saw the game over screen many times. The color powers do also make a comeback, albeit they do feel like they're kinda just thrown in, but they still offer up a nice change in gameplay. Besides them using some gimmicky gamepad controls, some are actually quite enjoyable to use, from sewing through the air with a red wisp or tunneling through the ground like a torpedo with a yellow wisp. But besides the way the game plays, Sonic Lost World is a sharp, polished game that looks fantastic at a constant silky smooth 60 frames per second. The worlds are full of bright and dazzling colors that make everything just really pop and brighten up the mood. The game is also littered with multiple cinematic cutscenes that will be encountered throughout your adventure that look great and even sound great in terms of voice acting. They actually feel like you are watching an episode of a cartoon, although they do say some cheesy things. Sonic games are also known for having great music, and Lost World doesn't disappoint. Most of the soundtrack flows along nicely coinciding with the different environments. Sure, they're not all songs that will get stuck in your head, but I did have a particular fondness for the title theme. And Lost World does feel short in terms of the number of levels it has, as there are only four main stages in each world, but that doesn't mean you won't get a lot of playtime out of it. There are multiple hidden stages to conquer, time trials for each level, and just trying to collect all five red rings in each stage will give you a run for your money though you surely clock in multiple hours tackling the Deadly Six. So overall, Sonic Lost World is definitely an interesting and creative game, and is enjoyable to play as you zoom around stages full of different ideas. But you may find a distaste for the game at first because of its unfamiliar controls. Like myself, you'll have to sink multiple hours into it until things start to become clear. It's not to say that everything controlled perfectly well because it didn't, but for the most part, it just has a steep learning curve. But overall, you're looking at a good and challenging game. So the GamingPixelShow.com is awarding the Wii U version of Sonic Lost World 
hold a 4 out of 5. But that will bring us to the end of this review, and if you like what you saw, please give it a thumbs up and add your favorites and all that good stuff. You can stay tuned for more video reviews, news videos, and Nasty Nintendo Crazy episodes. But I'll talk to you later in the next episode, guys. Bye!